Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, ma'am, I am the manager, bait and switch for a tech demo. A 17-year-old girl can't be the boss at a delivery service. Okay then, before we get started, be sure to subscribe so that you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Ma'am, I am the manager. Post number one here. I work at a dental office and I decided I cannot keep these to myself. So please bear with me and let me give some background before the juicy part starts. Karen, as Karen. Me, as me. I work as a patient coordinator and when a patient cracks a tooth, or the tooth is severely worn down, a crown must be placed before the tooth cracks down to the root. This is important, but not to the story. And in our office, the permanent crown must be delivered by the doctor that started the process. Each doctor has their way of doing treatment and we schedule the permanent crown delivery to weeks out. Note, my new co-worker whom started in my office a week prior, and not accustomed to scheduling like we do, accidentally scheduled the patient on a different doctor's date. Here is where the story starts. We called the patient a week prior to her appointment date, then five days, then three, and then on the day of her appointment. Each time no answer, but we did leave voicemails. On the day of her appointment, she walks in, I say, Hi, Karen. Have you heard the voicemails we have sent? I was hoping she did and was just coming in to reschedule, boy. Was I wrong? Oh and she is a trouble patient, because it is her way or she hits the highway. Karen no, I don't have time to listen to my voicemails. I'm too busy making money. Mio, because we have called you several times too. Karen yes, I know you have called and now I am here. Mio, okay, we were calling to let you know that we accidentally scheduled you with the wrong doctor, and needed you to pick a day and time that best suited you on the days he was here. Did you have a time in mind? Karen looked like she was going to start spewing fumes and toxic gas out of every pore of her body. What do you mean you scheduled me on the wrong day? This is a professional workplace and must act accordingly. If the doctor is not here, then just call Dr. Blank to get over here and do this tooth. Me I'm sorry, but unfortunately, Dr. Blank is out of town in another office. He will not be back till. Karen just call him. It would only take a few minutes. And, what is the big deal? Can't this doctor just put the crown on? Me sorry ma'am, but no. Per company policy, the doctor whom started the procedure must be the one to finish it. Karen Ugg, let me speak to the manager. I need to speak to her. Now, I hate, hate 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 those people whom feel that they can just demand and receive. The good part is that this particular Karen does not know or even seen whom my supervisor is. My supervisor, the coolest boss around. But scary when she is having a bad day, gave me the authority to act as assistant manager when she is not around or able to help at that time. With this particular patient, she allowed me to be firm and direct, not rude. I said okay and on my rolling chair spun around to times and stood up and said, yes ma'am, I heard that there was an issue with your crown delivery, am I correct? Karen looked mortified and just realized that she made a horrible mistake and said, well, um, I, me, ma'am, the doctor whom started the treatment on a tooth must be completed by that same doctor. Karen, ugh, you know that the crown is supposed to last just a few weeks, right Mr. Idiot? Me, oh, I'm terribly sorry ma'am, I did not know you went to dental school. And, since you did, you must also know that temporary crowns can last anywhere from three weeks, and if taken good care of, up to three months without the permanent. Since you know that, that also means you are also aware that my employees did the best they could to get in contact with you to reschedule this day, right? Karen, well, I am too busy to listen to voicemails. Me, that is not my or this office's problem. You decided that you did not need to listen to our multiple voicemails. We did you the favor getting you seen on this date, and this time, we could have easily said to wait another day, but since we were not overbooked, we squeezed you in our schedule. We could have told you to wait another day in pain because of our schedule, but you are an established patient with us, and we wanted to help. Karen, see, I am a patient, and that means my word is law, and that means I am in the right. You should have scheduled me on the right day from the start. If you did, none of this would have happened. Me, ma'am, we are not perfect. We caught our mistake and called you multiple times to let you know ahead of time that we made a mistake and wanted to correct it. We called you several times, but you decided that you did not need to answer your phone or listen to your voicemails. You decided to come in today instead of calling to ask why we called you so many times. So, again, let us schedule you on the right day. Karen, well, no, I am no longer your patient. I want my money back, now. 
Me, okay, we are sorry to hear you leave, but before this conversation can continue, I do need you to sign a consent form stating that you are no longer a patient with us. Karen, no, I won't. Me, I put my index finger up, no, once you sign the consent stating that you are no longer a patient with us, and I scan it in and put it into your chart. Then we will continue this conversation, but make sure you read this consent carefully, down to the very last detail before you actually sign it please. Keep in mind the cameras are watching and listening to our conversation and you filling out this consent form. Karen, ugh, whatever, just give me the stupid paper so I can get on with my life. She fills out the consent and hands it back to me, this lasted her a good meme. Five minutes, all she did was skim through, initialing and signing down to the very last page. This form, well documented, is a good three pages long stating that all her documents, treatment plans and miscellaneous forms will still be in our system until she is ready for them to be sent to any other office before we mark her as an inactive patient. Basically our office will no longer be allowed to answer her personal dental or medical questions. Once she is done, she hands me the forms. Me, do you have any questions at all before you allow me to scan this in? Put it in your chart and mark you as an inactive patient. Karen, with her smug smile, no, I don't. So I do exactly what I said I would do. Before I did, I made sure everything was initialed and signed. I scanned in the document, moved it to her folder and before I marked her inactive, I said are you positive that you are aware that once you are inactive, I will still talk to my regional manager to help me reimburse you for the crown and not for the build up, and you will no longer be our patient, right? Karen, with an annoyed expression yes, me, okay I marked her inactive. Karen, when will I get reimbursed for this tooth? Me, it depends when my regional manager sees my email and replies. Karen, whatever, as long as I get my money for this tooth. Me, ma'am, when you say tooth, you just mean the crown, right? Because like I stated before I marked you inactive, we will reimburse you for the crown and not the build up. Karen, what? Me, we, will, not, reimburse you. For, the, build up. That is our doctor's treatment to you. I will still talk to my regional manager and have her help me reimburse you for the crown. Karen, ugh, fine, call me when you do it. Let me know when I will be getting my money back. Me, sure, just make sure you pick up the phone this time, please. We do not want another incident like this to happen. Karen, whatever as she start to walk towards the door. She turns around and says, I need to use the bathroom. Me, with the biggest smile I can give and say, unfortunately ma'am our restrooms are for patients only she scoffs turns around, mutters something under her breath and then pushes the door open angrily out of our office. I call her about 15 seconds to make sure we called the correct phone number. Of course she does not answer. She does, however, come back into our office and asks wow, is my money back already? Me, oh, no, I was just making sure that this is the correct phone number to call you once it is in your account. Have a good day. Then she stormed out. Bait and switch for a tech demo. So back in the day when I worked for Midsize Co which was wholly owned by Giant Company, there was a big tech fest in Barcelona and Giant Company was going to be there. Just a few days before the fest, they realized they needed someone from Midsize Co to demonstrate our soon to be released game, but it was less than a week away. So my producer came to me I was the product's design lead and said, we really need you to go to Barcelona, but because of the short notice, we can't order you to go. I looked at him. He said, giant company guy that I like says if you go, you can either a fly first class or b take your wife. Well, the thought of scoring major karma with my wife who speaks Spanish fluently was the deal maker. And I said, you bet, and immediately phoned my wife with the exciting news. Just two days before we were due to fly to Spain, some bean counter a giant company decided the deal they'd offered me was too good, so decided to walk back on the offer. It wasn't written down after all. My producer came to me and said I couldn't take my wife when I went. So I replied, okay then, I won't go. My producer grinned and went back to the bean counter, who was amazed that I'd walked it back. He thought for sure I'd want the trip to Spain, right? Now he had no one to demo the mid-size co-product no one at Giant Company could do it. And no one else at Midsize Co. would do it after hearing how they tried to screw me. The bean counter caved immediately and me and wifey got our trip to Barcelona. I sat in a big white room talking about tech specs to nerds all weekend. And wife got to see the city. I did manage to go out to dinner with her in the evenings. Squid Ink, Prella and Tapas for the win. I am told that since they had to book my wife's ticket the day we flew. It cost giant company an extra $1,000. 
peanuts for them, but still. Of course the source of the problem is that the bean counter had a false perspective. It's not a trip to Spain for me, it's a trip to a big white room full of other nerds for the weekend. If I can't even score wife points, it was absolutely not worth the trip. The malicious compliance part is that big company said if you go, you get X, then rescinded X, so I complied by saying also rescind the if you go part. A 17-year-old girl can't be the boss at a delivery service. Okay then. So I'm not sure if this is the right subreddit for my story, but it's similar to stories I've seen on here. So I'll give it a try. Also, English is not my first language, so please excuse if there are some mistakes. Me, me obviously. RM, random mother. SS, shift supervisor. For context, my coworkers call me boss since I pretty much take care of everything happening at the store while being on my shift. Like, making sure the restaurant is clean, packing orders and telling the delivery guys which one they have to take, correcting the kitchen if they mess up, taking orders, answering phone calls and so on. Alright, story time. I work at a popular delivery service in my state, but we also have a small space that we use as some kind of restaurant. I've been working there for more than half a year and I really like to go there on school days, to spend my lunch break there and eat something. I was doing exactly that on a day where the delivery part of our store had a lot of orders incoming, so my co-workers barely had time for people ordering at the restaurant. I've watched a family entering the store while enjoying my meal and since the others had a lot to do, they were at least standing at the register for 10 minutes. Since I usually work at the cash register, I put my meal aside and take a seat behind the register. Me, hey there, may I take your order? The woman looks at me really confused and lifts an eyebrow to be fair. I am the only girl working at the restaurant, by far the youngest one and I was wearing regular clothes. But I knew that my coworkers were glad that I took over the cash register so I didn't see a problem. RM, I'd like to talk to an employee. What are you even doing behind the register? Me, miss, I am an employee here. I regularly have school today, but I jump in for my coworkers. Since as you can see, they have a lot to do right now. So, may I please take your order? RM was getting kind of pissed now, since I wouldn't let her talk to an employee. But I didn't really mind. Wasn't the first time that a customer was getting mad. RM now looking at my coworkers. Why is nobody getting her away from the register? Could I please talk to the boss here? I turned around to my coworkers and my shift supervisor had a big grin on his face. Which was a sign for me, that I could continue. Of course they had a lot to do, but they always keep an eye on me as soon as I'm at the restaurant due to harassment in the past and because I'm somewhat like their little sister. Me, well, you're talking to the boss right now, so may I please take your order? RM, are you kidding me? You're how ducking old are you? Me, 17, miss. RM was getting really rude now, so my supervisor took the time to come over and help me out a bit. SS, hey boss, any problems? I explained the whole situation to him and he sent me to do his tasks at the kitchen while he was taking RM's order. Her face was priceless as I went back to my meal afterwards, so I could enjoy the rest of my lunch break in peace. This story maybe isn't as exciting as other stories on here, but I really wanted to share it and maybe it made some of y'all smile. Have a nice day and stay healthy. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.